Friends, may the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. We are celebrating Ash Wednesday, and Ash Wednesday is the first day of the Lenten season. The Lenten season is for 40 days, excluding Sundays. And those 40 days, we remember that Jesus was 40 days in the mountain fasting and was tempted. tempted. And uh, we right now going to have this service in remembrance of all the sacrificial that Christ did for us. Let's pray. Oh, precious and loving God, we are coming before you, O oh Lord, repenting of our sins. We are, O oh Lord, we know that you can forgive us and that you are the one that always help us in every way. O Lord Almighty, we remember your days when you were in the mountain fasting, Lord. Help us to be fasting in this Lent season. Help us, O Lord, to have the pain of our sin. And Lord Almighty, help us to bring to you glory. And Lord, we are looking fervently for you. This is the first day of the Lent season, and we want to be praying, giving, fasting, O oh Lord, and providing to you with uh, the glory that is all yours, Lord. Thank you, and Lord Almighty, help us to be in this time in a, a solitude attitude and and repentance attitude, Lord. In the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior, we pray. Amen. Now, we are going to continue with the scripture from Joel chapter 1, verses 1 to 2 and twelve seventeen. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm on my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble, for the day of the Lord is coming, it is near. A day of darkness and gloom, a day of clouds and thick darkness, like blackness spread upon the mountains, a great and powerful army comes. Their light has never been from of all, nor will be again after them in ages to come. Yet even now, say the Lord, return to me with all your heart, with fasting, with weeping, and with mourning. Rend your hearts and not your clothing. Return to the Lord, your God, for he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, and abounding in, in a steadfast love, and relents from punishing. Now we are going to read 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verses from 26 10. So we are ambassadors for Christ. Since God is making his appeal through us, we entreat you on behalf of Christ. We reconcile to God. For our sake, he made him to be seen who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. As we work together with him, we urge you also not to accept the grace of God in vain, for he says, at an acceptable time, I have listened to you, and on a day of salvation, I have helped you. Now, let's talk about 2 Corinthians. 2 Corinthians begins telling us that we are ambassadors of God, 
and exhort us to reconcile to God through the lens of Ash Wednesday. Preaching this text calls attention to several important and meaningful themes as we move into the Lenten season. Paul's quoting of Isaiah 49.8 is the prophetic wake-up call that we sometimes need, especially in the winter months, when New Year resolutions have failed and new promises are ever more in the distant past. Reorienting life before God often needs a radical call outside of oneself to be reconciled to others. Being reconciled to God is not just another um, individualistic resolution or self-improvement step. Instead, it means being messengers and messengers of reconciliation, working together in a cooperative grace and participating in God's reconciling activity to win back the world. It is because of God that we can reconcile to God. God's action in Christ and through Christ make it possible for us to imagine what it means to be reconciled to God. On its own, the imperative in 520b is a command that we cannot obey or live out. It is only by knowing the promise put forth in chapter 519 that we can begin to measure being brought together with God in a relationship defined by and known in reunion, resolution, and understanding. When God entrusts the message of reconciliation to us, it is not simply about handing over the goods. Quite literally, it is the word of reconciliation that is established in us. Reconci reconciliation is something we are about, something that we do, and something that makes us a new creation. Be reconciled to God is an invitation to faith in the message that the reconciliation has been carried out. And then we, when we receive the cross on our forehead on Ash Wednesday, we are invited to remember that it is in Christ and through Christ that reconciliation is possible. Yet, we are also invited to remember that as we leave the church with the seal of the cross of Christ, we are Christ's ambassadors of reconciliation. I know now we cannot be in church and we can do our arches and put it in, uh, in our home. We can do it in our forehead or put it in the altar. And doing that, we are Christ ambassadors of reconciliation also. We are sent as representatives for Christ in Christ's stead, like Paul, we are apostles, messengers, and our calling as servants of God, that is what ministry is all about. Only one month after the inaugural address of a new president of the United States of America, reconciliation might still be an issue for our country, for our community, for our congregations, and 
for our relationships with, uh, the, and with the world. When a decision has finally been made, how does reconciliation happen? In what sense is reconciliation possible? Well, however, in exchange for this undeserved gift, we as believers are called to follow Christ's example of sacrificing, sacrificing the lesser things like comfort, wealth, freedom, reputation, and even and even physical life itself to help bring others to the unequal exchange of reconciliation with God. As we begin the Lenten season, let us reflect upon and be grateful for all the gifts of God that have given, have, that have been lavished on us so inequitable and ask the Lord to strengthen, guide, and protect us in our ultimate mission of making reconciliation as a reality in the life of all. Friends, I invite you, therefore, in the name of the church, to observe Holy Land by self-examination and re repentance by giving praying, fasting, and self-denial, and by reading and meditating on God's holy word. Amen. Now we are going to continue. We are going to bless our thanksgiving the, over the ashes. Almighty God, you have created us out of the dust of the earth. Grant that these ashes may be to us a sign of our mortality and penitence, so that we may remember that only by your gracious gift are we giving everlasting life. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Now, I'm going to do the cross in my forehead at the same time that you can do it in your home. And you can say, Repent, remember that you are dust, and to dust you shall return. Remember that you are dust, and to dust you're going to return. Let's pray. May the Almighty and merciful God, who desires not the death of a sinner, but will turn from wickedness and live, accept your repentance, forgive your sins, and restore you by the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Spirit to newness of life. Amen. O oh God Almighty, thank you, Lord, because you are the one you are the one forgiving us. You are the one accept, accept, accepting our repentance. You are the one accepting our prayers, our giving, our fasting, Lord. Uh, Father Almighty, thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who came and gave his life for all of us. Let's do the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I, in the name of the Lord Almighty, I ask you, have a wonderful Lent season, and 
like I say, follow the disciplines of our Lord Almighty. In the one we are going to be reading scriptures, fasting, giving, and praying. Go in peace. The Lord our Christ is with all of us. Amen. <laughs>